a quest for excellence is on. From every corner of Britain, 60 bakeries selected by experts to battle it out. Let me cut it, please, before I try. Please, let me cut it. Are you feeling the pressure, Nick? This will blow their socks off. Woo! Setting their sights on the ultimate accolade to be crowned Britain's best. Rafa, Rafa, pray, pray. Winning the competition would be the icing on the cake for me. Absolutely. This is where the pressure kicks in. Six weeks of tough challenges will see bakers pushed to their limits. We will get in a massive mess here. Oh, come on. Some will rise. Cool, they're smelling good. Amazing. I think they're looking good, don't you? Others will fall. Ooh. Get the other one, quick. Ooh, look, stop, stop. Just one will take the title of Britain's best bakery. <laughs> On the hunt for Britain's best bakery, our expert judges. Peter Sidwell, award-winning chef and artisan baker, and Mitch Turner, whose cake-making expertise has earned her an MBE for services to the catering industry. To win the title of Britain's Best, they will expect every bakery to push themselves and their bakes to new heights. I'm looking for a real trailblazer of a bakery. I want to find a bakery that oozes passion and enthusiasm for everything they do. They're going to have to show us that they've got the drive and ambition to be the very best. At their judging HQ in Derbyshire, Mitch and Peter are about to kick off the Wales and Central England regional final. All week they've been scrutinising bakeries from the region and today the four best will battle it out for a place in national finals week. The competition looks a lot stiffer today. Um, we are a bit scared, actually. <laughs> the first round was tough, but this round's going to be tougher, so the challenge is higher. In the heats, our timing and presentation weren't quite up to our normal standards, so we're really going to work on those things today. If we get through today, there should be nothing stopping us to actually go ahead and have a Only one can progress to national finals week, and to do so, they must excel in two tough-timed challenges whilst baking alongside their rivals. The day's competition culminates with a special judge's choice cake. But first, all must make an afternoon tea to dazzle the judges. You have three hours to prepare a mixture of sweet and savoury items, a minimum of five. You're baking for a place in the semi-finals. If you are ready, get baking. The judges will be scrutinising the bakery's every move. Look, um... Making a start on their afternoon tea, North and Mid Wales winners, the Baker's Table. Bakers don't have bingo wings. Self-taught bakers Nicola and Stephanie are champions of local produce, which is taking centre stage in their afternoon tea today. We've got a Palmer style ham that's cured in Talgoth, which we're very excited about using. And um, we've got salmon, which is smoked in Krakow. The quality of the produce is just so amazing that anything with it and tastes fantastic so I think it's going to be a real asset yeah along with Swiss roll and cheese and chive scones they're also making ham and cheese parmiers a savory pastry sometimes known as elephant's ears Stephanie starts with a rough puff pastry mixing strong white and spelt flour salt baking powder and olive oil she rubs in cold cubed butter Wales butter, of course. It's from Swansea. Milk and water, and then chills. When Stephanie and Nicola presented their wild garlic and pesto fugas in the heats, they impressed the judges with their intuitive flair for flavour. I do love the concept. I love the fact that you use wild garlic. Everyone should use wild garlic. But they struggled with their timings in the baker's dozen. Stephanie is making me get into a flat. I can make some more pastry, but I need to do it now if I'm going to do it. So the judges will be watching them closely today. Talk to me about your time management. I've got a schedule to start. <laughs> a printed schedule. Oh, Mitch, you'll love this. <laughs> so we've got three hours. Yeah. Well, there's a resting time. Is that for you or is that for the <laughs> bread dough? Determined to stay on track, Nicola finishes off the palmiers 
topping with Welsh blue cheese and locally cured ham. The pastry is rolled, sliced into dainty bites and baked. At the baker's table, they're pouring their passion into the They are a long way from their bakery, though. It's not here today. They're no. going to absolutely have to rely on their key skills. I'm expecting a really tasty afternoon tea from them. The palmiers are looking lovely and they smell delicious. Really pleased with those. Across the kitchen, Birmingham winners David and Remy from Maison Macy are planning to present a fusion of French and Brummie baking, including a couple of bakes that they've never baked before. There is some bases which I'm pretty much certain they would work, and some which are mm, touch and go, we'll see. Their eclectic menu includes sourdough made with beer and a traditional French brioche, but they're starting with a balti monkfish quiche to showcase local ingredients. We decided to do a balti quiche because Birmingham is well known to be the balti triangle. Remy starts on the filling, frying monkfish in balti spices. This dish is their unique spin on a French classic and plays on Birmingham's reputation as the home of the British balti. David starts by making a short crust pastry, rubbing butter into a mix of flour and salt before combining with eggs and a little water in a mixer. Do you know what? You have a certain glisten in your eye this morning. <laughs> like, you've got this kind of appetite for new ingredients and new things. Afternoon tea should be about different products. We don't offer them in a coffee shop. We do more the traditional French uh, quiches. These Michelin-trained baking brothers presented technically perfect patisserie in their heat. But what really dazzled was their ingenious wildcard bake, biscuit teacups with an Earl Grey custard. The presentation is exceptional, so well done. Thank you. And they're pushing themselves to come up with equally intriguing combinations today. We're going to start rolling the pastry for the quiches. David rolls and cuts the quiche cases, adds the Balti monkfish, then fills with a classic creamy quiche mixture and tops with cheese before baking. Maison Macy have really surprised me. They have really brought in a real eclectic range of local produce, which, you know what? Eclectic is what I think when I think about Birmingham, because it is an absolute cultural melting pot. And they're mixing it up with French flair, and that, for me, seems really exciting. At Baked in Tettenhall, the youngest and least experienced bakers in today's competition, siblings Richard and Catherine, are getting going. I'm generally more organised, yeah. um, which is quite messy, and I often have to tidy up after him. Which is also more bossy. I'm not, I'm not really bossy. Their innovative afternoon tea menu features chocolate scones, mini Eaton mess, and a West Midlands classic. We're making brummy bacon cakes. Tell me what's in a brummy bacon cake. Local bacon, local cheese, a scone mixture, finished off with port scratchings on top. <laughs> wow, that sounds that very sounds creative. Nice. Traditionally eaten with breakfast and similar to scones, brummy bacon cakes are a household favourite in the Midlands. Richard makes a basic scone dough using butter, flour and salt, but that's where any similarity ends. Grilled crispy bacon goes into the mix, along with cheese and two classic sauces, ketchup and Worcestershire, mixed with milk. Winners of the West Midlands heat, these young guns are no stranger to experimentation. Their peppery kick in the walnuts loaf was a brave and original idea. It's not a savoury bread, it's not a sweet bread, it's a very well flavoured bread. But inexperience nearly let them down when they overbaked their tart cases in the baker's dozen. We didn't see that it was just going quite brown around the top, got a bit burnt. Will they be out of their depth today? Dough made, Richard shapes and cuts into wedges, sprinkles with cheese and tops with crushed pork scratchings for a salty, crunchy bite. I think the brummy bacon cakes could be risky. The pork scratchings are very kind of... You either love them or you don't love them at all. So. And I suppose they're a kind of strange thing to put on an afternoon tea, but we thought we'd just go for it. I never thought I would live to see the day there was a pork scratching on my afternoon tea. Completing today's lineup, 
It's the father and son traditionalists from the Welsh bakery. Between them, they have over 70 years baking experience. That's not too thin, no. But that doesn't make this challenge any easier for them. They've never had an afternoon tea. But you've never experienced and sat down and had an afternoon tea? Um, I'd rather, you know, have a nice cream scone and a cup of tea. But... Right, OK. <laughs> and they seem to be playing it safe with a traditional selection of bakes, including Welsh cakes and chocolate eclairs. But for their first bake, they're making basil and parmesan bread rolls. To flour, yeast and salt, Robert adds oil, water and milk. It's about enough really, isn't it? And mixes until he has a dough. Then Dad Brian kneads the dough, adding basil and parmesan as he goes. This father and son duo breathe fire into the South and West Wales heat with their patriotic chilli dragon bread. I like the texture and I very much like the concept. Wonderful. So thank, thank you. you very much. And wowed again with their perfect pizza dough in the baker's dozen. Having shown the judges they can produce brilliant bread, these rolls are going to have to soar. Dough proved, it's over to Robert, who expertly crafts the rolls into Celtic knots before brushing with egg to guarantee a golden crust. Happy days, man. Once baked and cooled, the basil and parmesan rolls are filled with a local turkey pate. It does feel quite safe, but those guys do have a certain sense of humour about what they do, and I do feel like we'll get a real blend of Welsh ingredients and then their little stamp on it. Bakeries, you've had one hour. Now you've got two hours left for the challenge. The Welsh Bakery's bread rolls, baked in Tettenhall's Brummy Bacon Cakes, Maison Macy's Balti Quiches and the Baker's Table's Parmiers are all in hand. But with the judges insisting on a minimum of five bakes in each afternoon tea, the pressure can only go up. Refreshing afternoon entertainment. Everyday favourites, sponsored by Febreze. Medical research has transformed our lives. Clinical trials are making a huge difference to our generation and those to come. You too can be someone very special. If you're a healthy non-smoking adult aged 18 or over, we need you to help develop the medicines of the future at Quotient Clinical Nottingham. If suitable, you could receive at least £100 per day plus travel expenses. Go online now or text us. Bill here just saved £304 on his car insurance at Money Supermarket and now feels so good he thinks he can run with wolves. There are no wolves in Croydon. Malcolm, today's a good day. Let's run. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. 98% of people could save with us and feel as free as Bill. Bill, you're so money supermarket. There's nothing nicer than waking from a great night's sleep. From the warm burrow of a luxury king-size hypnos bed, floating on over a thousand pocket springs. What could be nicer than that? You can always rely on a Premier Inn for a great night's sleep, wherever you are. Everyday favourites, sponsored by Febreze. At Judging HQ in Derbyshire, 
the Wales and Central England regional final is well underway. So far, so good. We hope. Four bakeries are battling it out to create a stunning afternoon tea in just three hours. At stake, a place in national finals week. Yeah, I, I, I mixed it through, it's fine. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. With over 70 years of baking experience between them, the patriotic father and son partnership from the Welsh bakery are feeling confident. Mm -hmm. That's looking good. Robert and Brian have worked together at their Pembrokeshire bakery for the last 20 years and pride themselves on bringing a true taste of Wales to all of their bakes. Out of like raw ingredients, put them together with a bit of knowledge and uh, you create beautiful things. And their next bake is another traditional staple from their home turf. We got some Welsh cakes then. Welsh cakes? Oh. Traditionally eaten on St David's Day, Welsh cakes are drop scones made with dried fruit and spices and then griddled. With a cranberry and orange, and uh, it's going to be dipped in chocolate. Nice. Very nice. Is that something you do normally? Yeah, we do a cranberry and orange uh, and we do a chocolate dip, but this time we're bringing the two together. Brian mixes flour, sugar, baking powder, eggs and milk. I got the Welsh cake mix in, so I'm going to chop this orange, peel it very fine, so it's all the way through the Welsh cake. Candied orange and dried cranberries dotted through the dough, it's rolled out. Hoping to win some affection from the judges, Brian cuts the cakes into heart shapes before cooking on a griddle. To melt white chocolate, he puts it in a jug which he places directly into a pan of hot water. And then dips the dainty Welsh cakes, leaves to cool, and finishes with a dusting of icing sugar. blended French and Brummy flavours with their Balti Monkfish quiche, the Gallic Gourmets from Maison Messi are playing it straight with their second bake. A classic French brioche filled with cream cheese and salmon. It's the high egg and butter content that gives this bread its rich, soft crumb. After mixing flour, sugar, yeast, salt, eggs and butter, David works the dough by hand before leaving it to rest. The Gallic Gourmets have been bringing a taste of their French flair to Birmingham ever since David was lured here for love eight years ago. What we produce is what we grow up with, so it is French, we grow up in France. Now they woo the locals of Trendy Moseley with their delectable patisseries, pastries and breads. And they're hoping this brioche roll will win over the judges too. Dough proved, David turns half into brioche buns and the other half into pretty plats. I've got three daughters, so I had to do a lot of practice on two plating here. After glazing with egg and baking, David takes a moment to admire his work. It's perfect. Before filling his brioche with lashings of cream cheese and smoked salmon. What they've been very careful to do is ensure that they still deliver in terms of technical ability. Mm. We've got brioche, we've got mm. bread. They're incorporating lots of different technical elements. One thing that we missed out on earlier in the heats was flavour. If they can deliver it, it is going to be wonderful. And new kids on the baking block, baked in Tettenhall, can't help but notice this French finesse. That looks very impressive. Brother and sister Richard and Catherine are brimming with youthful ideas and enthusiasm. They opened their bakery on the outskirts of Wolverhampton just over a year ago, fulfilling their childhood ambition. I started baking when we were about three or four and very young with our parents and our grandparents. But today their enthusiasm is being truly tested. We're doing lots of things all at the same time. Catherine cracks on with their next bake. Choc chip chocolate scones, their novel take on a classic English tea time treat. Catherine rubs butter into a mix of cocoa powder, flour, and baking powder. Once the mixture turns crumbly, she adds dark chocolate chips and caster sugar, followed by milk. Ready and rolled, the unconventional dough is cut into classic scone shapes and baked. It might be another bake ticked off their list but it's done nothing to ease their nerves. Still can't relax, eh? <laughs> and the judges are concerned that their youth could get the better of them. 
Baked in Tetton Hall have really come up with some quite quirky, interesting concepts. Oh, they are recently qualified, trained bakers, mm. but that hasn't given them the time to sort of develop a real experience. Mm. Bakeries, you've had two hours. You've got one hour left. And another pair of inexperienced bakers are also feeling the pressure. I'm a little bit behind. Despite making a very detailed schedule, time is getting away from the baker's table. What I couldn't put into the schedule is how long it takes to work in a kitchen you're not familiar with. Purveyors of local produce, Stephanie and Nicola, breathe new life into their local community when they took over the bakery at Talgarth Mill in Powys in Mid Wales two years ago. It's all about flavour, it's all mm -hmm. about getting the best end result. Yeah, and it often means yes. letting things take their time, rather than rushing it and rushing it, there isn't any flavour and speed. In their lively cafe, these self-taught bakers sell a rustic range of breads, cakes and pastries. Okay. But as Nicola embarks on their next item, she's feeling a little rusty. I don't know if I've done this since I was at school. <laughs> the Swiss roll is a classic afternoon tea treat, though its origins are shrouded in mystery. Despite the name, it's not believed to have any connection with Switzerland. As this is a fatless sponge with no raising agents, Nicola whisks eggs and sugar for 10 minutes to ensure she gets plenty of air into the mix. It's ready now. I put the flour in. She carefully folds in flour and then pours into a lined tray and bakes. Now for the all-important roll. It may be 20 years since Nicola last did this, but she's still got the magic touch. My Swiss roll has rolled without cracking. She leaves it to cool completely before unrolling, filling with a thick layer of Welsh Black Mountain blackcurrant jam and then rolls ready for the seal of approval. I'm really delighted with my Swiss roll. <laughs> you have ten minutes remaining. Let's finish off. The bakery's three hours are almost up. All our contestants are racing against the clock as they put the finishing touches to their afternoon tea. Should be OK. There's no room for error. And with so many items to perfect, it's a high-stakes juggling act for all. Time's up, that's it. Bakeries, step away from your benches. The challenge is over. I feel really confident that we've done a good job today. You can only go on your own standard and we're happy with what we've done. I think everything looks really good. I think it's a really tough competition. We could have done with an extra 10 minutes just to clear up everything. Now the bakeries must present their afternoon teas for the judges to taste. But only one can progress to national finals week. Young Guns baked in Tettenhall are up first. They've pushed themselves with their creative ideas and produced an afternoon tea that includes Eton Mess, chocolate scones, sandwiches, quiches and brummy bacon cakes, a bake that Peter is eager to try. It smells like breakfast. Oh, God, it does. <laughs> it really does. Right, let's have a taste. We've got a wonderful salty bacon in there. I've got that hint of ketchup going on and then the, the salty little pork scratchings. I think it's a lovely bake, it's a great flavour, it's a great concept. I kind of feel like it needed refining a little bit to be a little daintier, but I think you're on to something, it's very clever. The chocolate scones are the next bake under scrutiny. Do you know, I've had chocolate chip scones before, but I've never had a chocolate chocolate chip scone before. <laughs> You've managed to combine chocolate in your afternoon tea in a traditional product of a scone, but the flavours on there work really well together. Because you've used chocolate and chocolate chips, it's given it a wonderful sort of velvety depth of flavour. And I think it's a great inclusion for the afternoon tea. Well done. Champions of local and seasonal produce, the baker's table are up next. Their afternoon tea includes scones, bread topped with smoked salmon, 
chocolate and raspberry tarts, Swiss roll, and palmiers with local ham and blue cheese. It looks nice and evenly baked. See if it tastes good. That lovely saltiness of the ham is really coming through, but I think it overpowers the blue cheese and not really getting that flavour through, but it's baked really well. And I think they're the perfect size for an afternoon tea, so they play a good addition. Thank you. Peter's pleased with the palmiers. But can they win Cake Queen Mitch over with their Swiss roll? You've executed the whisked sponge excellently. The jam is delicious and fruity. Would really have benefited from some buttercream or some mascarpone in there to just round off that whole mouthfeel, because without it, it's just a little bit dry. Next under the spotlight, it's Maison Macy with their brummy and French fusion bakes, including beer sourdough rolls, a selection of sandwiches, sticky toffee pudding, and bolty monkfish quiches. Your bolty monkfish sounds intriguing. But I'm always ready to try something new. The pastry is lovely and buttery. The monkfish has a really nice texture to it, actually. I think you could have had more of the bolty come through there. Had I not known there was bolty flavours in there, I wouldn't be able to recognise it. I'm going to try the French brioche. Technically, you've delivered a fabulous brioche, and you've balanced that with a really strong, powerful blend of flavours and a perfect execution. Well done. Hello? Last up, the Welsh Bakery. They've produced a traditional afternoon tea which includes salmon and pesto rolls, scones, and mini chocolate eclairs. But they've added some new twists with their cranberry and orange Welsh cakes and basil and parmesan bread rolls. It's baked perfectly and it's ideal for this job. You've put in a wonderful pate that's got a nice texture in there and it's well seasoned. I think it's a well presented sandwich that sits perfectly on your afternoon tea. Well done. With the sandwiches a success, will their Welsh cakes steal the judges' hearts? The orange comes through beautifully. The white chocolate gives it that real nice sweetness. And I think they're a really nice addition to your afternoon tea, and I'm glad you've put them on. It's an absolute treat and the perfect way to finish an afternoon tea. So well done. Thank you. Well done. Four very different afternoon teas. A place in National Finals Week could still belong to any one of these bakeries. Everybody has ramped up the elements involved, the technical ability, the flavour, the bringing in of their local produce to really try and step up to the mark at this competition level. Some more so than others. Mm. Next, the judges pile on the pressure as they challenge the bakeries to produce the same bake using the same ingredients. It's their toughest task yet, the judges' choice cake. The search for Britain's best bakery has reached the Central England and Wales regional final. There's only one challenge to go before the judges must choose which bakery deserves a place in National Finals Week. It's time to ramp up the pressure with the judges' choice cake. Mitch and Peter are tasking the four very different bakeries with making the same bake. A layered lime and coconut cake. This four-tier creation requires the bakeries to make a Genoise sponge, a fresh lime curd, and a cream cheese frosting. They've all been given the same ingredients. It's for the bakeries to decide how best to use them. You will have two hours. You all have the same recipe. You all have the same ingredients. If you're ready, get baking. The bakeries must try to outclass their rivals to earn a place in finals week. 
And the first task they face? Making the perfect Genoise sponge. The Gallic gourmets, David and Remy, at Maison Macy get cracking, whisking eggs and sugar over a pan of hot water. Although Italian in origin, Genoise sponge is the basic building block of most French patisserie. The boys have decided to make a lime-flavoured sponge by adding freshly grated zest. You are the first bakery to spring into action. I am familiar with the sponge. The most important thing is to get our sponge in the oven so it has time to cool down. Self-taught bakers Nicola and Stephanie at the baker's table are also feeling positive about this bake. I feel OK about this challenge, actually. It's a bit like the sponge that you saw me make this morning, so this one has melted butter added into it. They're going with fresh lime and desiccated coconut in their sponge. Meanwhile, the father and son duo at the Welsh bakery are opting for a citrus sponge using freshly grated lemon and lime zest. But despite having 70 years of baking experience between them, this bake could be a tall order. Do you make this kind of sponge in the bakery? No. You're not familiar with the chamois? It's a long time ago. I made Swiss rolls and sponges with the whisk. This tricky sponge technique is also a first for baked in Tettenhall's Catherine. I'm a bit worried that the water might get too hot and it might scramble the eggs. So yeah, that's something that could go wrong. Award-winning cake maker Mitch knows how this sponge should be made. So I've been whisking this for about 15 minutes now and you can see it's reached that wonderful whipped up mousse-like texture. You want to get to the point where when you lift it up, it leaves that ribbony trail across the surface. Now it's ready to fold in the butter and flour. So off the heat, and you melt the butter so it incorporates really easily. And you just trail it around the outside of the bowl. And then with a rubber spatula or a metal spoon, you fold the butter in. Sieving flour into the mix before gently folding in will incorporate even more air into the sponge batter. But at Baked in Tettenhall, Catherine's inexperience is showing. She's folding the flour in with a wooden spoon, a technique that's not pleasing Mitch. Um, I think it's OK, a, a few lumps of flour. You incorporate all that really delicate air, and then you have to fold the flour in with the lightest touches. Metal spoon, rubber spatula, definitely not a wooden spoon. I think I'm going to have to put it into the tins, because otherwise I'll just knock all the air out of it. Batter's made, the bakeries get their cakes into the oven. Now they need to get going with the next step, the lime curd. If they don't get that curd made quickly, it's going to take so long to thicken mm. and then so long to cool and set, it's not going to be chilled enough and thick enough to put inside their cakes. Remy uses a bain-marie, a bowl over hot water, to heat butter and sugar with lime and lemon juice. Then whisks in egg yolks and heats the curd until it coats the back of a spoon. For a final flourish of flavour, he grates in some fresh coconut. Oh, tastes nice. Self-taught baker Stephanie is also fusing more flavour into her curd. So a bit of zest as well, to add extra zing, you think. But novice baker Richard from Baked in Tettenhall has curd concerns. We've never made lime curd before, uh, so I'm... Uh, sticking to the recipe, it says it should start to thicken. It hasn't yet, so I'm just going to keep stirring and hoping. It's not scrambled egg, which is good. The crucial thing with the curd is getting it up past 75 degrees, because that's when the eggs start to thicken. Once your eggs have thickened, then you've got to cool it. Richard's patience pays off, and the curd thickens. I'm quite happy with this lime curd, actually. It's tasting quite nice. But will quite nice be quite enough to wow the judges? People names. At the Welsh bakery, Dad Brian and son Robert have plenty of experience, but in all the wrong areas for this challenge. Well, uh, bread and pastry man. Have you made a citrus curd before? No. Never? No. I'm in the process now, however. <laughs> if we do anything with lemon curd, like we take it from the bucket. <laughs> no buckets of lemon curd here today, no, no, Brian. No, no, no. Curd's cooling. The sponges come out of the oven. Bakeries, you've had one hour. You are halfway through the challenge. With a place in national finals week at stake, these sponges must be fault-free. I think it's OK. It feels quite nice. But it
it's the baker's table who are having a cake crisis. What are you not happy about? I don't know whether it's just because we've cut them when they're warm. They look a little bit dense in the middle. To try to rescue their cake, Stephanie and Nicola take drastic action. If we get the big round cutters mm -hmm. and take the middles out of them, mm -hmm. there'll still be a four-layer cake. Despite cutting the centres out of two of their layers, they're still not happy and decide to lose them altogether. That's the layers of sponge we've decided not to put in the cake because they're not up to standard. You can't serve that to Mish. But will the baker's table two-layer cake get them through to the next round? It's time for the final element of this bake to be made, the cream cheese frosting. To a basic mix of icing sugar, butter and cream cheese, young guns Catherine and Richard from Baked in Tettenhall are showing their inexperience by adding chunks of creamed coconut. In order to use creamed coconut successfully, you either need to grate it when it's hard or you need to melt it and turn it into a liquid first, cool it and then add it in with the cream cheese. So what you're going to find now is that's going to go really, really stiff. In a last-ditch attempt to rescue her frosting, Catherine gives it a blast in the blender. I think it looks OK now. There might still be a few lumps of the cream coconut in it, but I don't think there's really anything we can do about it now. The Welsh bakery are also using cream coconut in their frosting. Never tried it before, so... And they've made exactly the same mistake chopping it rather than grating or melting. This is a gamble. Having ditched one undercooked sponge earlier, self-taught baker Nicola knows that she must go all out to pack a lime and coconut punch. I'm trying to ramp up the flavour, so I've put some coconut and lime into the frosting and i put both things in the cake itself. And she's also creating what she hopes will be a winning extra. This is a lime drizzle that I'm going to put over the cake and it's lime juice and caster sugar and I'm just going to dissolve the sugar and then heat it up to boil. Purveyors of patisserie, David and Remy, from Maison Macy, are going all out to win. We are trying to make the most out of our given time. <laughs> In addition to a lime-flavoured frosting, David is making coconut twill biscuits to decorate the cake. Made using egg whites, butter, flour, icing sugar and desiccated coconut, David spreads half of the mixture into thin strips and pipes the rest into delicate hearts. You're putting an awful lot of components together for the presentation and you've got 30 minutes left. Are you going to be able to deliver every single element? Mm, yes, I think so. But the biscuit hearts have overbaked. They don't look much like hearts. So I've got a bit of time. I'm going to remake them. And time is running out. The bakeries start to assemble their cakes, well aware that the final presentation could make or break their chances of getting through to national finals week. Nicola toasts desiccated coconut to sprinkle over her cake. But she takes her eye off the ball. I need to do some more, it's got too brown. She's only got minutes left in which to do it. It's a mad dash to finish, as Baked and Tetanol finish off their sponge with a smothering of coconut frosting and a dusting of desiccated coconut. It's maybe not as pretty as I'd like it to look. It's just running out of time, really. The Welsh bakery top their cake with slices of lemon and lime and a sprinkling of freshly grated zest. Quick, we've got about two minutes. <laughs> the baker's table handpiped their coconut and lime frosting before topping with toasted coconut. And Maison Macy are taking it to the wire. Having rebaked a second batch of twill biscuits, David places them on the cake before finishing with hand-piped coconut frosting. Bakeries, that's it. Time up. They can't change anything now. All that remains is for the judges to taste. The self-taught girls from the baker's table produced a lime and coconut sponge with a lime drizzle. Sandwiched with lime curd and coconut frosting, they delivered just two layers after ditching an underbaked sponge. I feel the cake looks really pretty. It's just half as tall as I would have liked it to have been, but we don't want to serve up something that's not cooked no. in the middle. The Gallic gourmets of Maison Macy have produced an elaborate lime sponge layered with a citrus curd and a coconut frosting and decorated with coconut twill biscuits. 
I think today we have done enough to win. Yeah, I think we've maximised what we could do, all our chances for this afternoon. For their first ever attempt at a Genoise sponge, brother and sister from Baked in Tetanol have kept things simple with a lime sponge layered with coconut frosting. I think the judges will be impressed, um, considering that they know we've never made a Genoise before or a lime curd. And the patriotic partnership from the Welsh bakery went with a lemon and lime combo with their flavours and decoration. We threw a few ideas about and through each stage had different ideas as we're going, so hopefully they want all the ideas together and created something pretty good. But only one bakery can win a place in national finals week, and that decision lies with the judges. Refreshing afternoon entertainment. Everyday favourites, sponsored by Febreze. Medical research has transformed our lives. Clinical trials are making a huge difference to our generation and those to come. You too can be someone very special. If you're a healthy non-smoking adult aged 18 or over, we need you to help develop the medicines of the future at Quotient Clinical Nottingham. If suitable, you could receive at least £100 per day plus travel expenses. Go online now or text us. Bill here just saved £304 on his car insurance at Money Supermarket and now feels so good he thinks he can run with wolves. There are no wolves in Croydon. Malcolm, today's a good day. Let's run. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. 98% of people could save with us and feel as free as Bill. Bill, you're so Money Supermarket. With a magnet kitchen, beauty isn't just on the outside, it's on the inside too. It's innovative design, an intelligent use of space, that make our kitchens beautiful inside and out. The half price sale is now on with 50% off all cabinets, plus £500 worth of free appliances and a free AEG coffee machine. Bring in your measurements for an instant quote. Magnet. Find beauty. Built in. Refreshing afternoon entertainment. Everyday favourites, sponsored by Febreze. The Wales and Central England Regional Final is coming to a dramatic conclusion at Judging HQ in Derbyshire. Four bakeries have been battling it out, but only one can make it through to National Finals Week. And it's all down to this final tasting of their attempt at the judge's choice cake. A layered lime and coconut cake. Our two judges are industry leaders. Peter Sidwell, artisan baker and award-winning chef, and internationally renowned cake maker, Mitch Turner, MBE. Purveyors of patisserie, Maison Macy, won praise for their eclectic blend of French and Birmingham flavours in their afternoon tea. And with its pristine presentation, their judge's choice cake shows off more of their French flair. This cake has so much style, but has it got the substance? That lime curd is so zingy right the way through that. I'm getting kind of a, a secondary coconut flavour afterwards, which I like. I think you've delivered a very technical, very tasty cake. Well done. For me, what you've done is maximised every single ingredient that was on the table. You should be very proud of yourselves because that is a fabulous cake. Thank you very much. Next, the patriotic pear from the Welsh bakery. 
father and son served up a traditional afternoon tea with a creative twist. But they'd never made a Genoise sponge or a lime curd before, so this cake proved a real challenge. I have to say, for two bakers who've never made a Genoise sponge, this looks pretty impressive. It does have a nice sort of greenish hue to it where you've folded that lime zest through. I'm getting a really big hit of lime with that. And I'm getting that kind of aftertaste of coconut. And it gives a very different texture right through the middle, which I quite like. For a bakery that works with such traditions, to never have made a gemoise and a lime curd really surprised me. But this is what you do. You take a challenge, you embrace it, and boys, you've nailed it. The self-taught bakers from the baker's table are next. Their afternoon tea, packed with local produce, impressed the judges. But after they binned an undercooked cake, they've ended up with two layers instead of four. The flavour that you've achieved in your two layers of cake is so intense mm. that I'd actually be worried if you'd have given me four <laughs> layers. <laughs> I am getting a real hit of coconut in that cake. The flavour comes straight through. The lime curd kicks in and gives it that real sharpness. In terms of combining the two flavours together, that's the best I've tasted so far. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, it's the Young Guns, brother and sister baking duo from Baked in Tettenhall. They served up an innovative afternoon tea, but they took a simpler approach with their cake, having never made a Genoa sponge or a lime curd before. But let's see how it tastes. We watched you making your gemoise and you actually used a wooden spoon to beat the flour in. And what that's done is given the gemoise quite a tight crumb, made it quite crispy. The cream cheese frosting's got a nice flavour to it, but the lime curd is not sharp enough for me. I'm really wanting that hit of zingy, tangy limes, but I think it was a good attempt. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Judging over, the bakers face an anxious wait. To decide on the winner, Mitch and Peter will take into account everything they have seen today. Only one can go through to national finals week. The judges face a tough task deciding who will win their vote. Visually, when I arrived at the table of Maison Macy, I was really hoping that their cake was not going to be style over substance. And I thought the flavour was really strong. They delivered on technical ability, appearance and flavour. They've created not only a real plethora of afternoon tea treats, but they've incorporated so many local ingredients and mm. combinations of flavours. I thought the Welsh bakery delivered an afternoon tea that was not overly exciting. Mm. And they gave us the Welsh cakes, which was nice, that it was a little safe. For a bakery that doesn't make gemoires mm. and has never made lime curd, I thought they did an incredible job. It did deliver on flavour, and they delivered what we asked for in possibly the style we expected. I think the baker's table were concerned when they realised they were only going to be able to use one of their gemoises and they ramped up the flavour to such an extent that it hit us with both barrels. I think if I closed my eyes and based it on taste only, the baker's table would have had it for me. I thought the technical elements of the baker's table afternoon tea were all there, mm. but they were missing a little bit in terms of overall textures. Baked in Tetton Hall had a bit of a rough ride on this challenge. They've never baked a Genoese sponge. It's very hard, even when you're following a recipe, if you don't know what to expect, what to aim for. I think they had all the elements of an afternoon tea. They just haven't got the experience on pulling it all together. So we have to choose the one bakery that's going to go through to represent this region in the semi-final. For me, it's a no-brainer. There can be only one bakery that goes through into the semi-finals. And that bakery is... Maison Messi. Maison Messi. 
absolutely deserved winners. They have given us a masterclass in afternoon tea today and totally nailed the judges' choice cake. They embrace local produce, they fuse it together with their French technical ability, flair and real appetite to win this competition. <laughs> I feel really proud to have been chosen to go onto the semi-final where it's only going to be five bakeries. They were our odds on favourites and they completely deserve it. They'll do a great job representing our region in the semi-final. The competition has been a nice eye-opener for us uh, and it has helped us to appreciate how how good we are as bakers. We haven't shown uh, everything that we can do yet, and hopefully there is a lot more to come. Maison Macy have really excelled today. If they continue in this vein, they are absolutely the ones to beat in this competition. Next time, three bakeries from Lancashire and Merseyside. A cordon bleu patissière strives for perfection. She does the messy jobs. I'm going to get told off for it. Two pie men are pushed to the limit by a tea cake. This challenge is getting a bit stressful now, I'm doing it. And a pair of cake bakers are forced to make a loaf. It's 45 years since I've made any bread. As the search continues for Britain's best bakery.